still showed out today. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I want to say welcome. Um, do we have any first time visitors today? Good, so we're all family. Actually, we do have a first time visitor. We have Mr. Chris here, and he is doing us a huge favor. He's gonna snap a few pictures. So please give him a warm welcome. <laughs> All right, so today we're gonna do things a little differently, right? Uh, we're gonna ensure that we have our social distancing. We're gonna give each other air high fives and elbow bumps, but just look around and say hello to, to your family members, all right? We can still stand up. We can still be happy. Hey, hey, Mel. <laughs> Good to see you again. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> see, I mean, we can still feel welcome in the house of the Lord, uh, even as we, we can't touch each other, right? So today's, <laughs> I like it, air hugs. I forgot to include that, air hugs. All right, so today, just so you know, we're going to have an opportunity to intercede for this base. So I'm going to do something a little different. I'm not going to have the normal message, normal preaching. You'll see we're going to do communion, but then afterwards we're going to intercede. You can intercede quietly in your seats. You don't have to stand up, um, and we'll lead you all in prayer, okay? But in that moment, I will leave some space so that you can share whatever is on your heart with the Lord, all right? And I promise you, we will not be here all day, all right? Thanks, so we're gonna go ahead and place in the hands of Sister Armani as we go into our responsive reading. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Amen. That's some great news. He shows us compassion for those who respect him, who revere him. That is what that word fear means. So praise God for that.
ahead and have a seat family go ahead and have a seat so it's announcement time um so we already talked about the pre, uh, the precautions that we were going to take we're still going to have bible studies the same time where you can find inside of your bulletin if you flip to the back of your bulletin we have a list of uh charities that we give to every third sunday so this is just so in your mind next sunday if we need to adjust, you'll still be able to go online. So open up the side of your bulletin. There's a scanner or a QR code, excuse me. And that is where you can give to the Samaritan Purse. That is our designated charity for, um, for next week, just in your mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and put you in the hands of the usher as we, oh, offering will be a little different today. So we're not actually gonna take any physical uh, money this time, but this is gonna be an opportunity for you to um, Take a picture of that QR code and then give online. That's something that we're going to try to start practicing. You will need your credit card information stuff, but no pressure. If you don't want to do that now, you always get to take the paper home and you can do it later if you feel led to, all right? So we're still going to pray and give us some time to, to prepare and give. Leave it to Miss Jacqueline. She keeps me straight every day. <laughs> so it's offering time. 
what does that mean? Why do we give? So, 2 Corinthians 9, 67 says, For each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So, tithing is not a debt that we owe, but a seed that we sow. We give because the Lord has given so much to us. So this is just a way to say thank you to the Lord. And I know we might be wondering what the tithe and offering is used for. It's real simple, to advance the kingdom of the Lord. So what do we do with the offering? We purchase Bible study materials, religious retreats, food for fellowship, and giving to select charities. We want the gospel service to be known for the generosity that we do provide to Inslick Air Base and the other charities that's on the back of your book. Please let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we come before you this afternoon just to say thank you. We're here because you felt the need to wake us up this morning. So many are not awake. Some are awake and don't know that they are awake. But we take this opportunity to give back to you just a portion of what you have blessed us with. We're not going to take the physical offering today, but we're going to give it to you online so that it can be used for the advancement of your kingdom. Father, I ask that you bless each and every one that hears this prayer today, that's in attendance today, whether they're sitting in the sanctuary or whether they're watching online. We thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
God that uh that he waited for us I don't I don't know how many of you guys really understand how how phenomenal his grace is the fact that he decided to wait for us thank you so much so we we were talking about we were going through a sermon series of uh the gift of grace Y'all, I was like super excited. I was like, man, we're going to talk about access, man. Like that's a huge gift of grace, the fact that we have access to the Lord. Um, we're going to put a, a pause right there, and we'll come and revisit that because it's a word from the Lord about the access that we have. And so instead of just teaching it about, about it today, we're going to go and emphasize it. Now, I've always offer and ask people, like, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord, say we always give the invitation. And as I'm looking around, you all are family, and we've all accepted him, so we all have access. So today, we are going to go to the Lord on our own behalf, but then also the, the, uh, the uh, men and women of Interlick and their families. But before, I'm going to put you in the hands of the ushers. We're going to do something that the family does, and that's partic participate in the Lord's Supper. So don't worry about coming up today. Don't worry about coming up today. We're going to come and serve you. Thank you so much.
Acts. As we always do, we're going to read the word of God, 1 Corinthians, verse 11, excuse me, chapter 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take Eat this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This, do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. We just leave that beside you. Amen. It's a blessing to be able to participate in the Lord's supper, remembering what he did for us. So there was an old song that my grandma's church used to sing. And if y'all thought I was going to sing it, it's not happening. But I'll say the lyrics. It said, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. And you have somebody, a tambourine, just hitting it, and it picks up, man. And, and even though I didn't really understand what that song meant at that age, visiting the church, as I look over my life, I literally, like, I'm so glad somebody took the time to pray for me when I was unable to pray for myself. Many times I think that I'm only in this position because old grandmama took the time to rock back and forth and just call the name Jesus and then call out my name following that. And so today, as I've mentioned twice before, we're gonna do that. We're gonna first worship God and thank him, but we're gonna take the time to focus on specific points. And so, I also want to ensure that we know that this is biblical. We are going to be able to look at some scripture. And I'm going to enlist the help of a dear brother in the faith, T. And we're going to tag T this thing. So some of y'all don't know him as T, but Shirt Mulio is going to pray with me. And of course, we have technical difficulties technical difficulties, but guess what? That ain't gonna stop us. Hey, you know what's so funny in the, uh, in, the, in the old church when something like that happened, like if the CD is skipping or something, they'd be like, take your time, baby. That just tell you to keep, take your time, you, let them use you. That's, that's how they, <laughs> that'd be so awkward. They shake it, they're like, oh, that's all right. I don't need it. I got the scripture in front of me. So Jeremiah 10, 6, it tells us, that there is none like you, O Lord. You are great, and great is your name in might. Psalm 96, 4 tells us, For great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. He is feared above all gods. So in this moment, I want you to silently just think about the greatness, the holiness of the Lord and give him what he is due. Creator of the universe, the sun, the stars, the moon, God, the heavens, the vegetation, the seas, an intelligent, 
creator, an intelligent designer is what we call you. That is who you are. But we're so grateful to know that you are our heavenly father. The person, the being that took the time to create this entire world, took the time to create us so uniquely, create us so wonderfully. And God, you are just so great. Lord, we don't have enough words in the English language or any language to express the multitude of who you are. So we would just say, Abba, Father. As the angels are saying right now, we will say, holy, holy, holy. That is who you are. Before we can ask you for anything, God, we have to recognize that you are God all by yourself. That word says that you are feared above all God. We believe that you are the one true living God. And we don't fear you with a sense of unapproachability. This fear is reverence. This fear is respect. We lay prostrate in the spirit to you, God, just thanking you for sparing us and waking us up another day. for protecting and waking up our family members, God. For placing your angels around us around while we sleep, Lord. Some of our brothers and sisters did not wake up this morning. And many of them are at your feet praising you. They're in their glorified bodies, God, but we understand that we're still here because there's work to be done through us. And so the fact that you have left your Holy Spirit to remind us of all truth, to empower us, God, to have a glimpse of who you are, we just say thank you. Because you're mighty. We can flee to you. And you will promise to cover us. Praise the Lord, all nations. Extol him, all peoples, for great is his steadfast, his steadfast love towards us. And the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. The steadfast Lord of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. God, we just thank you so much that you are extremely faithful towards us. When we fall down, when we're too tired to pray, when we forget to say our grace and thank you for the food that we receive every day, God, we are still faithful towards us. When we choose to turn our backs on you, God, your promise in your word is that every day we wake up, you extend new mercies towards us. And we're going to take the time just to say thank you for the new mercies. I don't know what new mercies you bestow until the GS family, but they do. So God, we just God, when I think about your grace towards me, towards the people that I love, I thank you so much that you did not give us what we deserve. Lord, 
Lord, you have not given anyone in this room what we truly deserve. Your hand of mercy and grace reminds us of how much you love us daily. And God, as we intercede for our brothers and our sisters who aren't here, who couldn't be here, who may have chosen not to, to serve you, God, we know just as much as you were patient and you waited for us, you will do the exact same thing for them. So for any brother or sister or cousin or mom or dad or best friend, play cousin. God, for any of those that we are connected to who do not acknowledge you, please, continue to extend your mercy. Please help us to be a light so that they can see your good works and ultimately come to you. God, just like you did not spite the Israelites because of how Moses interceded, after they worshiped the, the false god and the golden calf god, you stopped because Moses interceded in the beginning, God. We are interceding on behalf of our brothers and sisters, blood-related, those that we work with in the, in the sections of our squadron, God. You know exactly where they are. For those who question your goodness, Lord, allow them to dig deeply. Allow them to have a conversation with someone here, offline, and to hear how your mercies are renewed every morning, and to hear how you love us when we are faithless. God, we just want people to know you. But you, O oh Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Thanks be to God that Jesus intercedes for us. That he is sitting at the right hand of the Father as we speak, uttering, praying on our behalf when we don't know what to say. God, prayer is just to talk to you, not fancy words, but to have a heart-to-heart -heart with you. And so we're grateful that you don't do what's right and just and express your anger and place your anger on us. Your word tells us you chastise those you love, so yes, there sometimes are consequences for our reactions, but God, you didn't kill us in it. And so we thank you so much for the lessons Maybe it wasn't good to us, but it was good for us, God. Your grace. Your grace is sufficient. Your grace is sufficient, God. Your children are enough because your grace is sufficient. When society says they, they aren't enough, remind them that your grace is sufficient. When they begin to compare themselves to their peers, to their family members, God, remind them that your grace is sufficient. 
God, when they struggle with a matter of conscience or sin, God, remind them that your grace is sufficient. And as they continue to get up and walk or crawl to you, God, that your grace is sufficient. Take this moment, church, to, to lay at God's feet what you're trying to pull out. Whatever that flesh, that thorn is in your side, just tell them in this moment what it is. And once you tell them, he's saying his grace is sufficient. It'll keep you at the front of his feet. It'll keep you humble. It'll keep you depending on him and not your own strength. It's his grace. It's his grace. God, thank you for my brother, Teve, Lord. Cover him as he now intercedes on behalf of his brothers and sisters in the faith. Thank you for using him as a willing vessel. Lord, I believe in that you are putting and downloading your words into his mouth at this moment and that he will say what you will have him to say. So I thank you that your grace is sufficient. We worship you, Father. We just thank you for continuing to allow your spirit to move within us, Lord, Father God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18 says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father God, you said today and in your word that if two or three are gathered in your name, that you will be present, Father God. We worship you for you are great and greatly to be praised. We thank you, Father God, for just continuing to be present. We thank you, Father God, for just continuing to move and allow each and every one of us in here to be influencers for the advancement of your kingdom, Father God. Where we are today in our society and what the world is going through, Father God, we thank you for the circumstances that we're currently in, for it allows us to see truly how great you are, Father. It allows us to see and practice the faith and the word that we continue to, uh, to receive every day, Father God. Lord, we are willing. Lord, we are able. Lord, we are here because you continue to allow and meet with us. Jesus, family, as the spirit continues to move within you today, we ask, Father, that you open your heart, that you open your soul, and that you allow God to move. Father God, more of you, less of us. Psalm says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name, Father God, we come before you today and we just thank you. We lift you up. We thank you for yet another day, another opportunity to show grace, to be thankful for what we have, for what you continue to provide, and we proclaim your victory, Father God. Through what is happening on base, through what is happening outside of these gates, Father God, we know and we proclaim that victory because we serve a living God. We serve the almighty God. 
Lord, we worship you, we glorify your holy name, and we continue to thank you for allowing you, your spirit, to use us again so that we can continue to bring souls to your ministry, so that we can continue to wear that armor, Father God, that you so speak of today. Lord, we worship you, we glorify your holy name, and we thank you. Ephesians, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Lord, as we take this supper today as a remembrance of what you have continued to provide and give, we thank you. We ask that you remove all malice, all anger, all bitterness. As you can see in society today that we are so consumed by what is out there. But we know we serve a God of peace, a God of comfort, of love, of forgiveness. And that you continue to provide, that you continue to provide the spirit of discernment so that we can make the right decisions, so that we can lead and make an impact in our communities, in our families. Again, only to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Father God, we thank you for continuing to allow and to use us. We ask, Lord, that as we intercede today on behalf of our families back at home, of our brothers and sisters that are in harm's way, that are separated from their families, of our nation back at home who is going through a transition, for the world that's going through this pandemic, we ask that you remove all anger and all rage. We ask that you provide peace, that you provide calm, comfort, Father God. We worship you, we glorify your holy name for you are worthy worthy to be praised. Isaiah 1, 18 says, Come now, let us settle this matter, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red as crystal, they shall be like wool. The Lord our God is merciful and forgiving. Even though we have rebelled against him, God, we thank you so much again for not giving us what we deserve. We thank you so much that you prophesied in the Old Testament of your son Jesus Christ and his blood washing us clean, Lord. Yes, we are unworthy. But because of our posture inside of the blood of Christ, God, we can come to you boldly. And God, you do not see our sin. You see his blood. Thank you, Jesus. God, the enemy will try to remind us of past sins and past mistakes, times of unforgiveness and bitterness. But Lord, we thank you that we are new, we are transformed, and we have been adopted and are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. So we are clean in your sight. God, we're not perfect. Did not say that. But because we are covered in his blood, because we choose to depend on him, because we claim Jesus not only as our Savior, but as our Lord, he will control he will drive our decisions. God, we have been justified. You have declared us not guilty. As the enemy tries to accuse us, we 
other bodies of believers are not guilty, God. So, Lord, I am praying that my brothers and sisters in the GS family can get that in their heart, that you have declared us righteous. We are in right standing with you, Father, because of Christ. You forgive us, Lord. Your word reminds us again as the enemy or old tape starts to tell us we're not good enough and we, we struggle and God will forgive us. He is accuser of the saints, God, but the devil is a liar because your word tells us if we confess our sins to you, he is faithful. You are faithful and righteous to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, God. Help us get that through our big head. Help us to believe that in our heart and hearts. That all we have to do is confess our sins. So, Lord, in this moment, we're going to take some time to confess our sins to you. And now we believe your word where it says that you are faithful and just. So you have the opportunity, you have the right to forgive us. But the great news is that you cleanse us as well, God. And therefore, if anyone is in Christ Jesus, the old has passed away. We are new creatures in Christ. We're saying hallelujah in our spirit for that right now, God. We are new creatures in Christ. We have access to you, God. The veil has been torn. In the Old Testament, the priests had to go and, and atone for the, the people of God. But God, there is nothing that separates us from you. We can go directly to you, God. We do not need the priest to pray on our behalf. We don't have to confess to another person, God. We can ask you, Lord, directly. Thank you. The new is here. We just got to walk. or crawl or look up and yell your name, God. And you will reach down and you shall save us. Lord, you are perfect. As last week, you showed us through Jesus Christ of how to, to be unbothered in this season, God. We know your word tells us to do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, letting our requests be known to you, God. Your word tells us we have not because we ask not. Your word tells us that you want to give us the desires of our heart as long as they are in alignment with your will. God, let us open our mouth and heart to be able to ask for the big things and not just the small things, God. Because see, the small things we could do, Lord. I'm praying for any dreamers in this room God, the fear of the unknown or potential failure, it tries to stop us 
from achieving, from walking into what you have called us to be. So God, for, for anyone who desires to be a mother, God, for anybody who desires to, to be a chief Lord, For anybody who wants to des desire to be a, te a tech sergeant, retire as a tech sergeant, and to be that expert, hands-on training with their airmen, Lord, that's their dream and that's their desire, God. And I am praying that that is your will for them as well. Let us not be fearful to ask for the big stuff, oh God. Let us remember that without faith, it is impossible to believe you. To, it is impossible to please you. Lord, help us to remember that if it doesn't happen, you still love us. And if it does happen, you still love us. God, we're going to pray for some things specifically, God. As mentioned earlier, Lord, we ask for you to be with our brothers and sisters on this base, outside of this base, who may be fighting against some illness, rather COVID, rather diabetes, high blood pressure, Lord. Sickle cell anemia, Lord. Cancer, God. HIV, Lord, we ask for you to meet them in the hospital rooms, God. You are the great physician, but you also use science and medicine, God, to do your divine healing power. So we're asking you to meet them where they are. We're asking you for them to give them peace in this chaotic time. Even though family members may not be able to be in the hospital room, allow them to feel your presence, Lord. Remind them that you will never leave or forsake them, God. God, I pray that you be with every hospital person, every person on the front lines, God. We have people right now on this base that are daily doing COVID testing. God, place a hedge of protection around them. Lord, be with our wing leadership as they begin to, to strategically plan and, and how to keep us all safe, God. Even if they have to make tough decisions, Lord, let, they, let them be led by you, oh God. Help the GS family and the entire chapel community, God, to get creative. Give us strategies and how to move forward in the next couple of weeks. Lord, we ask you to be with our president-elect and, and vice president-elect, Lord. God, politics can be so decisive, but that is not of you, Lord. You and your word, you tell us to, to give Caesar what is due to him, God, and give God what is due to him. So I pray for protection for, for the president-elect, vice president-elect, and our former president, God. Be with their families. There's a lot of pressure and scrutiny that's happening in D.C., God. But again, we want you to cover them. Protect them. Give them godly wisdom. Ask them to have the best interest in the mind, have, have the, the airmen, the soldiers, the sailors, the Marines' best interest in mind, our family's best interest in mind. God, your word tells us that all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purposes. All things, everything that doesn't feel good, 
things that we don't understand, but because we love you and we're called towards you, Lord, you will make all of those things turn well for us. So no matter what side anybody sits on, all things will work well for us, God, because we love you. And we're called according to your purpose, Lord. Jesus, we thank you so much for this time of prayer. We thank you so much that you say you hear our cries, God. We thank you so much for the family members and the relationships that might be a little rocky, God, but they're mending in the, in the spiritual realm, Lord. God, you're going to bring families back together. Yeah, spouses, children, best friends, God. You want to mend them, Lord. But God, we also thank you that you are the true vine dresser, Lord, and that you prune us. So when it's time to cut people off, God, we will hear you and we will cut them off. We will love them. We will forgive them. But sometimes people can't go where you're taking us, Lord. So give us the discernment to know when and how and to love and truth and spirit, Lord. But to not be tied down. God, you've used a mighty man of God to, to, to impact the, the, the Christian community, to teach us how to have proper relationships. And a lot of times how we position people in our lives, it, is, it will determine where we go. You only took three to the Mount of Transfiguration. You only took three as you pleaded to your father before you went to the cross. Help us discern our three. And then when, even when our three disappoints us, God, <laughs> remind us that you have forgiven us time and time and time again. Show us how to forgive them time and time and time again. God, I thank you for restored work relationships. Strategies, love, happiness, peace, joy. God, even if it's chaotic, we still will have peace. Nobody will take our joy because our joy is founded to you, Lord. God, be with our NATO partners. Ultimately, God, we lift all this to you. And we're going to leave it at your throne of grace. Because you told us we have access. This, this time of prayer is a gift of grace. So we thank you for the access. We thank you for hearing us. And when we leave, Lord, we know we're going to be in a better place because we have taken this burden off and we placed it at your feet. So although this was a solemn moment, Lord, we are going to rejoice because we trust that things will be better. Things will be better. Oh, so thank you. And we seal this time of prayer in Jesus' most holy, most powerful, magnificent, mighty, mighty name. And our family says, Amen.
How many of y'all know that in this COVID pandemic, things are gonna get better, right? <laughs> the situation we're going through right now is gonna get better. Stand and give God some praise if you know things are gonna get better in your life. Despite what you're going through right now, despite the state of the world, things are gonna get better. Get better, y'all. Trust me. So I'm going to dismiss you guys from the back, but we're going to leave in orderly fashion. Because back in the day, remember at school, you lined up, and I just want to make sure I say, see y'all faces, because sometimes y'all be sneaking out of here and don't say bye to me. So we're not having that this time. All right. So the hands of the ushers. Can y'all still hear me? Is it still going? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. May God keep you. May he bless you. May he continue to have his face shine upon you. In Jesus' name, I pray that this week will be better than the last week, all right? And thank you all for being so faithful to the Lord first and then also supporting this community. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs>